Yes. Passes 7-0. With a quick vote, Phoenix City Council ending a major lawsuit, a $650,000 settlement now going to Frances Salazar. She's a grandmother who spent nearly two years in prison, wrongfully convicted because police hid their officers' history of lying. I mean, what they did to me is wrong, period, all the way around. Our mission is to stand for what's right, no matter the pressure or the pushback or how long it takes. It's why Chief Investigator Dave Biscopine spent the past four years covering what happened to Francis. And Dave's here now with the kind of reporting you're only going to see right here on ABC 15. Now, a lot of time has passed since this case began, but it's important to know how we got here because it ended up being about so much more than just one case or just one officer. It helped expose Arizona's broken Brady list system. It put the police chief under oath. It exposed Phoenix PD had no clue or care about a basic constitutional right. And it exposed how hard the city would fight to defend an officer with a history of lies and sex assault allegations. It was devastating. It was, it was worse than a nightmare. I mean. It was August 2020, our first report on Frances Salazar and her case. It's hard to put it to words. You do solemnly swear the testimony you are about to give will be the Francis spent 22 months in prison for alleged drug possession. The conviction based solely on the testimony of Officer Anthony Armour. There was no video, no pictures, no drug tests, or any physical evidence. You have an officer who got on the stand. That's it. End of inquiry. After two years, a judge tossed Francis's conviction. <laughs> The court found out Armour was a documented liar, and before Francis's trial, Phoenix PD did not disclose that he falsely arrested a different woman and lied about the circumstances. We aired Francis's story as part of a larger ABC 15 investigation. Dave Biscobing continues full disclosure, his year-long investigation exposing Arizona's broken Brady system. The Brady List is supposed to track officers with a history of lies, crimes, and other integrity concerns. It gets its name from the 1963 case, Brady v. Maryland. The Supreme Court ruled negative information like that needs to be disclosed in criminal cases. But because it wasn't in cases like Francis's, we decided to compile and publish the first ever statewide Brady list. And we've been updating it ever since. It's now got more than 1,800 names. Confirming deeply disturbing new details about that officer, Anthony Armour. He's been accused of sexual assault multiple times. After reporting on Francis's case, we quickly discovered a lot more about that officer's past. Two women, including a fellow cop, say he sexually assaulted them. But Phoenix cleared Armour each time. Now, our reporting put a lot of pressure on Phoenix PD, and it led to an interview with then Police Chief Jerry Williams. And attorneys say how the chief did respond shows she has, quote, no idea about how the Brady system works. We found that it was as of last year, about 100, between 100 and 110 active Phoenix officers were on the Brady list. How do you feel about that? I feel that that's a process that's been set up to make sure that the Maricopa County Attorney's Office and the prosecutors can engage in asking people questions during the voir dire process. Voir dire has nothing to do with Brady. It's jury selection. Tonight, it's the Phoenix Police Chief like you've never seen her before, on camera and under oath. Chief Williams was deposed because of Francis's lawsuit. We got a copy of the tape. Chief Williams, do you know anything about my client, Francis Salazar? Do I know anything about who and who? And whether she actually knew about Francis or not, her lawsuit forced the chief to answer questions about our reporting and why she didn't know how the Brady List worked. I indicated to you before I misspoke when I talked talk to ABC 15. I should have left that to NCAA. As chief of police, are you expected to have a working knowledge of Brady? Chief of police, I'm not to be the subject matter expert on Brady List. The evidence turned over in Francis's lawsuit also proved that Phoenix routinely sat on officers' misconduct files, the city waiting 200 days on average before submitting names for the Brady List. They came to you and said, Chief Williams, it's taking on average 200 days for a Brady report that's finalized to get MCAO. What would you say to that? Objection assumes that's not in evidence speculation, foundation, they... And during our reporting, we also learned the Department of Justice looked into Francis's case as part of their ongoing investigation into Phoenix PD. I don't want this to happen to anybody else. I want there to be some kind of change. A few more things to point out. 
Officer Armour is now retired. He left under a confidential disability claim and is collecting a pension. And as we were reporting on this case, Phoenix also tried to subpoena our raw reporting. We argued in court the city subpoena was clearly retaliation, an attempt to scare away victims and sources from speaking to us. And in the end, Phoenix lost, wasting more of your taxpayer dollars in the process. I'm investigator Dave Biscoving, ABC 15, Arizona.